Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, January 5th. We're going to talk about this uh, forecast. It remains rather interesting because we're at 52 degrees this morning. It's been kind of mild all morning long, but the first thing we want to talk about is about a really unique art store that has popped up on San Antonio's north side. We've never heard of this kind of store before. Yeah, so this is a discount art supply store and they do take donations. Um, it's very discounted. Uh, and supposedly, I guess if you're, this is for people who maybe start a project and don't finish it um, and like still have like a bunch of yarn left or whatever art supplies are left there. But uh, it was, uh, where is it? The Center for Creative Roos by the nonprofit Spare Parts, which features an array of used arts, crafts, fashion, and office supplies, opened the doors in late 2020 on the north side. Yeah, the store is comparable to other creative reuse stores in Austin, Seattle, and Portland in that they sell pre-owned and donated supplies for teachers, artists, and other creatives while helping the environment. Supplies for sale include the following. Art books, coloring books, crafting supplies, old calendars. Yeah, I get, well, because they can cut it up. Okay, and gotcha, do collages gotcha. with it. Yeah, okay, yeah. right. See, my brain was like, I, I couldn't compute that. <laughs> uh, old magazines, old photos, art brushes, paint, glue, primer, canvases, crochet supplies, and yarn. So it is located at uh, the 13,000 block, four, okay, 13,491 Wetmore Road, and it is a brick and mortar store, but it is by appointment or only. Uh, you have to book an appointment. It's $25 to go in and to have your, your private appointment. I think they consider you a VIP member if you do that and book an appointment, or you can shop online or Instagram during the week, but you, you can't pick up your supplies that day. You have to pick it up on the weekend curbside on Saturday or Sunday. I think what Steph's trying to get at is there's some fine print here. They say the mm -hmm. next VIP experience is coming up January 16th and 17th. We have all this information, including again, the address on our website at ksat.com. And it's in here, the, again, it called the Center Center for Creative Reuse by the nonprofit Spare Parts. And I, I haven't looked at the deals yet. Uh, we have a link on our website at ksat.com, but they say that some of these art supplies are going for like 10 cents or mm -hmm. five cents. So. Check it out. <laughs> so here's today's Nine at Nine. Here's a look at the latest coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average is now at 1,289. Health officials reported seven new virus related deaths in the latest report. Our positivity rate is up to 23.2%. Nationwide, more than 128,000 people are in the hospital. There's growing concern that COVID-19 vaccinations are falling way short of expectations. The FDA warns changing the approved dosing schedule could create a significant risk and undermine vaccination efforts. It's election day in Georgia, where the two Senate runoff elections will determine control of the U.S. Senate. President-elect Joe Biden says his agenda is at stake. The state of Wisconsin mobilizing the National Guard and getting ready for possible unrest over potential charges against the officer who shot Jacob Blake and left him paralyzed. The Kenosha County District Attorney is expected to make a decision on whether to charge the officer in the next two weeks. The New York Stock Exchange says it no longer plans to remove shares of three Chinese state-owned phone carriers under an order by President Donald Trump. The exchange cited further consultation with U.S. regulators but gave no other details of its decision. Stocks fell Monday as investors took their profits and ran in the first session of 2021. The sell-off comes after markets closed at record highs on the final trading session of 2020 last Thursday. It's a final farewell this week for Jeopardy fans. The final episodes with host Alex Trebek are airing this week. The final episode will feature a special tribute to Trebek. If you're planning a trip this spring, Southwest wants to help make that happen with a big four day sale. It's called the Wow Sale. You can snag a flight between March and April for as low as $29 one way. The deal lasts through Thursday. McDonald's is adding a new chicken sandwich to its menu. The new crispy chicken sandwich will be available in February. The new sandwich will be available at participating McDonald's locations nationwide. And that's today's Nine at Nine. The chicken sandwich war is about to get bigger. I know, that's a, a lot of restaurants participating in the war at mm -hmm. this time. Uh, I wonder how this one will fare.
I don't know. We'll see. Let's go outside with live cam, and we do have some clouds uh, that have worked their way in. Something Mike Osterhage was talking, talking about in our earlier newscasts, and now they're here. Yeah, they rolled in, and, and we've had a little bit of fog out there too, especially south of San Antonio. So let's look at the visibility around the area. The, uh, San Antonio International Airport's doing just fine, but places like Kennedy, Gonzales, and Beeville, visibility's down close to zero. So be extra careful out there. We're going to see some of that thicker fog, especially south and east of town. That's where we have a dense fog advisory that's going to go until 10 o'clock this morning. Includes places like Carn City down to Beeville and Victoria. Uh, visible satellite picture. Yeah, that tells the story. You see that cloud deck just surge in from the south and east. So now we've got cloudy skies for all of Bear County. And those clouds are moving in around Hondo. They'll be moving in around New Braunfels here fairly soon. And temperature wise, Underneath those clouds, it kind of acts like a blanket. Temperatures are warmer, 52 Randolph, 54 New Braunfels, but in the 30s out there with clear skies in the hill country, 39 Kerrville, 37 in comfort. Here is some, well, horrible news, I think. Uh, Mountain Cedar is in the very high category, 18,200. It really jumped up today. That's the highest count we've had so far this season. Your forecast for today. We'll get some clouds early, maybe a few breaks this afternoon, and then clouds build back in later this afternoon and this evening. Temperatures up around 68 for a high chance of rain tomorrow. We'll detail that plus another chance of rain Sunday. We've got the latest forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's check trans guide right now. Light traffic at the uh, fine silver curve and at the Y here in the downtown area. There's 1604 at Bandera Road on the northwest side and traffic coming right at you on Highway 281 near Loop 410 on the north side. Top stories we are following today. San Antonio police are investigating after a woman was shot and killed in an apparent love triangle. Officers tell us it all started when the victim and suspect started arguing early this morning. It happened around 1 30 in the 150 block of Seashell Drive. That's on the southwest side. Police tell us they arrived at the home and found the victim dead with a gunshot wound to the head. According to officers, the suspect lives at the home the victim was found at. Now, police say the victim and suspect were both involved with a man who also lives at the home. Police tell us the suspect drove off but was later found by officers. We are still waiting to learn what charges the suspect is facing. This is a developing story and stick with KSET to learn the latest updates as they become available. Also making headlines are waiting on the identity of a man who was killed in a shooting late last night. It happened off of Beulah Street and Ferris Avenue just after 10 p.m. Officers tell us when they arrived to the scene, they found the man with multiple gunshot wounds to his chest. He was then rushed to a nearby hospital in critical condition, but later died. Police say they have no information on any possible suspects right now. That shooting is still under investigation. A house fire caused many challenges for firefighters this morning. It took them more than three hours to put that flame out, uh, flames out just uh, south of downtown. Broke out just before four this morning on Weinberg. That's near I-35 and Division. Crews tell us when they arrived, they saw flames burning on both ends of the home. Nobody was inside, but neighbors were evacuated as a precaution. Firefighters tell us there was a secondary roof on top of the original one, which caused that fire to spread to other parts of the home. Right now, arson is investigating to find out the cause of that fire. Any morning headlines, brush fires in Australia and a neighbor saves a family from their burning home. A mural to remember six heroes and a coffee shop that is changing lives. Our David Sears is here this morning. Good morning, David. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all? Good. good. Very good. Very good. All right, we're going to get right to it this morning. Remember last year, Australia had those massive deadly fires. It's happening again down under. This is a brush fire burning out of control, taking place north of Perth. Western Australia's Department of Fire and Emergency telling people affected by the fire to stay alert because the fire is being fanned by some pretty strong winds and the fire is still pretty dangerous. An emergency warning has been issued. Some folks have already evacuated that area. All right, this is Carolyn Palish frantically banging on the door of her neighbor's house because the house is on fire and she's trying to get those neighbors out. You're looking through a doorbell ring camera. This is all happening on New Year's morning. The family of six sound asleep when Carolyn started banging on the door. She kept banging and banging and yelling until the door finally opened and then the parents and the four kids got out just in time. The firefighters told us that if it would have been five more minutes and that roof would have came down with us in the house, we would have inhaled all that smoke and we wouldn't have woken up. I've been a nurse for 40 years and you hope that you've always done good for everyone. But to actually see the result and to see them alive and well and their children are here, you can't ask for nothing better. 
Yeah, the family says Carolyn is not part of their family for saving him. Firefighters looking into what caused the fire, but they said the house is a total loss. And now you're looking at a mural on the side of the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Nashville. This is honoring the officers who risked their lives on Christmas morning to save residents who were in harm's way when that bomb went off. The mural was painted on plywood at a downtown studio. Then it was used to board up a window at the Hard Rock that was blown out when that explosion happened. After the repairs are done to the Hard Rock, the mural will be hanging inside and framed so that everyone who comes inside the Hard Rock can be reminded of the heroic action of those six uh, officers. The project was sponsored by an organization called I Believe in Nashville. Their next goal is to make sure that the officers get to see the mural. And now you're looking at the new coffee and ice cream shop in Sarasota, Florida. Not your regular kind of shop. The employees are all folks with special needs. Beaver Shriver is a co-owner of the shop. His intention was to offer job opportunities to a community where 80% of the people who can work are unemployed. The company has partnered with the Haven and Easter Seals of Southwest Florida so employees can earn a paycheck, get a business card, but more importantly, achieve financial independence. It's an inclusive workplace, uh, but then there's the other side of it where customers come in and they get to meet somebody that maybe they've never met before, somebody that has Down syndrome or autism, whatever the issue may be, and they can just hopefully open their eyes and open their hearts and realize that these are just regular people and and the big phrase I like is to end the fear of difference. Even if it's a few hours a day, it's a little bit more than what a paycheck can do for us. Yeah, they've only been open for about a week, but the business is already booming and becoming a very popular place. Looks like they serve some pretty good coffee and some pretty no good ice cream. No kidding, right? So. Thank you very much, David. Good to All see right. you, sir. Yep. Uh, we're at 909, 52 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. And it seems like we've all run out of shows to watch during the pandemic. Well, there may be a new TV game show you'll want to binge watch. The details on Best Leftovers Ever, still ahead. Plus, an auto mega mercher is in the works. Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot, their shareholders have approved that merger. Why experts say it'll be the fourth largest automaker by volume in the world. And also next, Max Massey joins us live to talk about the urban farm by the San Antonio Food Bank, what's being grown, and how it's helped feed thousands of people in our area. That's after the break. All eyes on the runoff election in Georgia today, and that could affect the market. But right now, after a rough Monday, it's up about 80 points at 30,305. Welcome back. Throughout the pandemic, the San Antonio Food Bank has made national headlines by answering the call and has helped thousands of people in and around our community. And one part of the food bank that has been instrumental in their efforts is their urban farm. Our Max Massey joins us live from that farm. Now, Max, what are they growing out there? Good morning, guys. They're growing a lot out here, but the thing that we can see right now, take a look at this. We got Brussels sprouts growing, breakfast of champions to help explain more. We have Darren, the farm manager. So Darren, along with Brussels sprouts, what else do you guys grow? Yeah, a lot of different things, a lot of different variety. I mean, we have green onions behind me. We have carrots and uh, beets, and we also grow cabbage and watermelon during the spring and red potato and sweet potatoes. Uh, the whole you know, gamut. Oh yeah, a whole, whole lot of variety. So 2020, obviously, it's going to be known as the year of the pandemic. How many pounds of food have you guys been able to grow? We were still able to create about 265,000 pounds of food. 265,000 pounds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And all donated to the food bank. Yes, all to the food bank, goes into our warehouse, and then distributed th through the proper channels inside the warehouse. Now, anyone who's farmed knows it is not an easy task, yeah. especially with the conditions. It's a little chilly out here, yeah. if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, you know, what's your motivation? Yeah, I mean, just the work that we do for the community um, and, and being able to feed uh, hungry people is just what keeps me motivated. You know, no matter if it's 104 degrees or 40 degrees like today, it, I come out and work as hard as I can to produce as much food as I can and, and get it to the people that need it. Now, we are in Loop 410. We're inside the Loop, and it says on the sign when we first get here, urban farm. So what are some of the challenges you guys face? Yeah, it's truly an urban farm. Um, you know, we get visitors a lot, and... And, and and local dogs and, and things like that, you know, but but other than that, I mean, you know, we have sun, we have water, and we have ground to, to grow in the soil, so everything we need to produce fresh produce. All right, so speaking of the ground and the soil, so when I pulled up, I knew it was cold out here, 
But I was like, there's no way that's snow. Can you explain what we're looking at here? Yeah, so this is what we call plastic mulch. Uh, so we lay the plastic mulch down first uh, so that the there's two main reasons. One, the moisture will stay in the soil longer for longer periods of time, not being exposed to open air. And two, as you can see around the crop, there's no weeds. Mm. And so we're, we're trying to reduce that weed pressure so that the crop has a jump to grow and that way there's no you know enemies of it trying to to grow the fresh pr fresh produce all right Darren, thank you so much you said volunteers are instrumental in this process yes absolutely volunteers are always needed uh, we have volunteer shifts uh, wednesday through saturday uh two a day most days uh, we're out at mission san juan on thursdays and every other saturday so we all also have a urban farm over there at mission san juan uh 40 acres there we're growing yellow yellow onions right now out there and we also have a peach orchard out there and uh, all of our harvesting is done by, by volunteers, so we couldn't do it without them, and uh, they're very vital. All right, thank you, Darren. And speaking of volunteers, we're going to be speaking to one coming up at 930. We'll check back in with you then. All right, Max Massey, live right now at an urban farm. Consider me mind blown. I've never seen a Brussels sprouts. No. <laughs> in, in, you know, in the wild before. Actually, still out in the field. I, I didn't know that's the way they grew. I, I didn't either. I just, you know, see them being cooked all the time. Right. And that's Ma about it. Max said Brussels sprouts are a breakfast of champions. We're going to try to find out what else he's eating in the morning, too. Well, um, that's good for Max. It is good for Max. I can't do it, but at least I guess there'll be uh, rain for some of those uh crops out there? <laughs> yeah, we're hoping so. Yeah. yeah, well, Wednesday morning and Sunday morning, Brussels sprouts for breakfast. That's mm, mm. the tall order for some of us. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the cloud cover there. We've got some clouds trying to shift in here from the south. They came in quickly this morning. We had clear skies here in San Antonio, but just within the last hour, these clouds have moved in from the south and east, and you see the cloud deck right there moving to New Braunfels, Gonzales, and we're starting to see some clouds also developing up there around Fredericksburg and Blanco. And really the only places that are clear right now are up in the hill country, Rock Springs Lake, yeah, out towards Del Rio and Eagle Pass. A little closer look here at San Antonio. There are the clouds. It's going to stay cloudy for a period this morning. We may see some sun popping back out this afternoon, but then later today we'll also get some high clouds coming in from the west. So generally speaking, uh, sort of a mostly cloudy day. Visibility-wise, now, we're doing fine here in San Antonio, but the fog is thick. Gonzalez down to Kennedy, Beeville over to Victoria, and even out towards Catula starting to see some fog developing. So for that reason, there is a dense fog advisory that's going to go until 10 o'clock this morning. So about another 45 minutes or so in those areas. And visibility could get close to zero in some of those spots. 52 right now at the airport. Cloudy skies, east northeasterly winds at about 3. Temperatures. Quite a bit colder in the hill country, 38 Fredericksburg, 41 in Kerrville, but you got 50s and even 60s underneath that cloud cover where there is more humidity. Dew points in the 50s and 60s down closer to the coast. There's, there's a weak boundary sitting in here somewhere to the north. The air is a little bit drier to the south. That's where we're seeing more humidity, and it's one of the reasons we are seeing some fog. Now, dew points will start to increase. I think we'll get quite a bit more uh, humidity and moisture overnight. That's going to lead to some fog and drizzle tomorrow morning and probably a few showers, too, before our front comes through midday tomorrow, and then the dew points drop off again. Here's what we're watching. So a couple systems here. One right now is over the Rockies. Another one back out over the Pacific, way out there. But these are the two systems that will have an effect on our forecast. So we fast forward to tomorrow and you see the showers lining up ahead of this first system. It's a pretty quick mover. It gets out of here and our rain chances really are relegated to Wednesday morning. Next chance of rain will be Sunday. Looks like maybe best chance Sunday morning. And I think we'll have probably a little better chance with this storm system. It's still a little bit early, but something to watch. You notice there is maybe some wintry weather painted in there somewhere. Probably a little bit too warm for us, but something we'll watch as we get later into the weekend. On a smaller scale here, let's look at the forecast for tomorrow. As we get into tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, you see some showers, some drizzle. We'll see some fog overall kind of damp to start your Wednesday. And then by midday, showers are starting to push east. I think we could see some thunderstorms. Gonzales up to College Station, LaGrange midday. And then as that pushes away, our rain chances go away and skies clear. Forecast for today up into the upper 60s. Again, maybe some breaks uh, midday, early afternoon, and then clouds build back in tonight. Tomorrow, 68 degrees, drizzle, fog, 40% chance of showers, mainly in the morning. 67 Thursday and sunny, 60 on Friday and sunny. More clouds on Saturday and Sunday looks to be a chilly, wet, blustery type day right now.
We're forecasting 48 with a 40% chance of rain, guys. Wow. Sunday is very interesting. Right. Very January. Very much so, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now, it's uh, exactly 921, 52 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a diner owner is thanking the community after nearly 2,000 people saved her restaurant. After the break, why? She says she feels like there's hope in everyone's future. Hi, welcome back. It is 924. Wounded warriors and their families were showered with gifts and holiday cheer as they drove by a church in Hawaii. And although the nonprofit held its traditional holiday gala as a drive through event this year, families still enjoyed it just as much as any other year. Christmas treat came a little bit late for the guests who showed up, uh, later for the guests who showed up. The First Pre Pre Presbyterian Church, they were met with season's greetings from Disney favorites and a welcome from the Christmas Grinch himself. And it's small things like this that one soldier says can really brighten and change their day. Everyone kind of gets a little depressed if things aren't going so well with the pandemic and so forth. But these 70% of our clients suffer from PTSD. You know, th this kind of a thing lifts their spirit. 41 families from all branches of the military were also presented with gift cards from local businesses, sweet treats, and toys for the kids. The nonprofit also purchased face masks and phones for some wounded veterans. They needed the phones because they otherwise could not speak with their counselors. Well, 2021 looking a little bit brighter for a small diner up in Minnesota after the pandemic nearly closed it down. And thanks to its loyal patrons, its doors can stay open a little longer than expected. So Melissa Matson, the current owner of Mickey, says in a flurry of New Year giving, $67,000 collected, blowing past a $50,000 goal. She says the mostly small donations came from more than 1,900 people. I personally felt like there was hope, not just for us, but just for everyone who was donating, hope that we're going to see a return to normalcy, that we're going to get through this. Thanks to the help, Melissa says she can now pay her patient vendors and repair a neon sign that went dark last year. Finally, she says now that Mickey's is reopening is reassured payback is on the menu. In your other good news, a nursing home in Athens, Greece is the first elderly care facility in the country to receive coronavirus vaccinations. A 95 year old resident first in line, she said, quote, I hope my children do it as well because I cannot see them at all. I am very pleased, end quote. Currently, Greece is under COVID-19 lockdown until next week. Vaccinations of the general public are expected to start at the end of the month. New TV game show is coming just in time for anyone who has maybe some leftover holiday stuff in the freezer or anything like that. Best leftovers ever on Netflix features three chefs per episode whipping up new creations out of already cooked dishes. Professionals judge the results and the winner walks away with $10,000. Viewers might just learn some new cooking tips. Interesting. And pizza crust lovers, get ready for this. Pizza Hut's out with something called nothing but stuffed crust, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A ring of cheese filled dough, no pizza. It's only offered at locations in California and, yay, Texas, for a few days this week to celebrate the 25th anniversary of their original stuffed crust pizza. Sounds delicious. I remember the ads. Uh, I'm trying to remember the year when... Um, uh, it was like David Robinson and um, Dennis Rodman were on the Spurs, uh -huh. and then they were talking about the stuffed crust when it first came out, and David Robinson was eating it like a, like a normal person, I guess, and then Dennis Rodman was a crazy one who started with the stuffed crust. Who would have thought? And now, it's just its own thing. Almost yeah. a metaphor. Yeah. 927, 52 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. And Samsung is wasting no time this New Year's by releasing a new smartphone when you can get your hands on it. Still ahead in Consumer News. And the 87th Texas Legislature begins next week. One of the biggest items on the agenda, redistricting, what that means for Texas politics.
931, the 87th Texas Legislature begins a week from today, and one of the biggest items on the agenda is redistricting. redistricting rather. This process can impact Texas politics for the next 10 years, and our Eric Hernandez joining us now in studio to break down what we can expect for this session. Hey, morning. good morning. Hey, guys, good morning. Well, when we talk about redistricting, it means the redrawing of maps for the state's congressional, legislative, and state board of education boundaries. This is all very important because who you elect depends on which district you live in. Now, here's some things you may want to know about when it comes to redistricting. First, Republicans right now control the process. Next, according to the Texas Tribune, because the Voting Rights Act was gutted by the Supreme Court in 2013, the 2021 cycle may mark the first time in nearly 50 years that Texas will be able to implement new legislative and congressional districts without having to prove ahead of time what that maps does don't undermine the electoral power of voters of color. Now, another thing to take into consideration is this is usually done right after a U.S. census, but because of the pandemic, census data has yet to arrive, which could make this challenging to get through, and that data is not expected until April 1st. Now, as far as breaking down how this process works, the Senate and House redistricting committees are made up each of 15 members, and they must work together to redraw the maps fairly and equally. They will work alongside expert map makers and the Texas Legislative Council and receive input from the public. Now, once the maps are ready, they go through the same path as other legislation does. Now, if the House or Senate cannot agree, the job of redistricting then goes to the Legislative Redistricting Board, which is made up of the governor, lieutenant governor, speaker of the House, the comptroller, and land commissioner. Now, oftentimes, the issue of redistricting usually will end up in legal battles. This session redistricting will for sure look different, especially as the census data is again not expected to arrive until the spring. Now we will continue to follow the upcoming session right here on KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. Again, it all begins on January 12th. Mark, Steph, a lot going on in legislative sessions this yes, year. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. We'll be watching closely. Taking a look outside with live cam, it is 52 degrees right now. At least here locally, it's pretty, um, I would say, miles for January. Yeah, I mean, when you look at that picture in January, you think, man, it's uh, really cold outside. It's not. It's in the 50s right now. We've got some clouds that are moving through the area. We may see a little bit of sun this afternoon. The numbers everyone is looking at this morning are those mountain cedar numbers. Look at this, 18,200. It's in the very high category, jumped up big time from yesterday. This is the highest count we've seen so far this season. So just a heads up. Uh, looking at the uh, dense fog advisory, that's still in effect for about another 30 minutes or so down there closer to the coast. That's where the fog has been thickest this morning. Places like Kennedy, Carn City, Beeville, down to Victoria, seen quite a bit of fog. And uh, the cloud cover is there too. That's been working its way up I-37, and now it's moved into Bear County, starting to work its way into Bandera and New Braunfels. Uh, we'll see some breaks, but it's going to be a few hours before that happens. 41 in Comfort, 41 in Kerrville, those are the cool spots, but 50s elsewhere. 54 in New Braunfels, 55 in Castroville. And we'll get those temperatures into the upper 60s this afternoon. Clouds will also shift in later today out ahead of our next storm system, which should bring some rain tomorrow. We'll talk about those rain chances and the weekend, too, coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide, looking at 281 in the quarry, looking pretty good over there, and 281 at Grayson, things running smoothly for now. In your consumer news, Samsung users, you may want to listen up. The electronics giant is expected to avail the latest Galaxy S21 smartphone next week. The new phone expected to unveil at Samsung's Unpacked event January 14th. This is about a month earlier than their typical February showing. And Fiat Chrysler and French automaker Peugeot approved a merger this week. The new company will be called Stellantis and will employ a total of 400,000 people, making it the fourth largest car maker by volume in the world with more than a dozen brands. Now, merging is projected to yield more than $6 billion in cost savings. The new company will be based in the Netherlands. The companies expect to close a deal on January 16th. They plan to start publicly trading in Milan and Paris on January 18th and on the new New York Stock Exchange the next day. Go Spurs go. We're cheered on the silver and black as they take on the LA Clippers tonight. Derek White's going to miss some time because of an injury to the left toe. Uh, White re-injured his toe during a game New Year's Day and doctors say he fractured it. This is typically an injury. It takes about four to six weeks to heal. The show goes on. Tip off schedule for 9 p.m. San Antonio time. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go.
time now is 936 and 52 degrees for now. Coming up, 2020 made it hard to travel, but many got creative when it came to camping. Still have the most popular places for glamping in the Lone Star State. San Antonio Food Bank distributes thousands of pounds of food, not only through mass distributions we've seen through those mobile pantries and food fairs. These programs work to move food quickly to families and individuals who need them the most. A food bank has been crucial during this pandemic. Max Massey joins us live at a food bank farm. And Max, earlier you were talking about the Brussels sprouts they're growing out there. They look amazing. <laughs> Yes, Brussels sprouts, the breakfast of champions. That is on the other side. We are now here. I'm told we are looking at carrots or the process of growing carrots. Now, this is part of the 40 acres of land out here at the urban farm. The goal is to grow about 300,000 pounds of food every year. This past year, 265,000 pounds. And I'm told volunteers are what makes this happen, what makes it run smoothly. Suzanne, one of the volunteers. So, what exactly do you do every day when you volunteer here? Uh, a variety of things. It can be helping with planting, it can be harvesting crops, but it can also be less visible things like putting down drip tape, working on irrigation system repair, pulling it up again, mulching, weeding, um, hoeing, cultivating. Depends on the season and the stage that the crop is in. Now, no one said farming was easy, so why do you do it? I do it because it's a way to participate directly in um, growing food that feeds the community. Um, it's also a way to learn about the land, how it's been used, uh, the history, um, the crops that thrive here, how we're adapting to a changing climate and to experience on a very small scale the kind of labor that goes into producing food, but that's often invisible and really devalued. What would you say to people out there who may be wary about volunteering, you know, that have said, I've never worked on a farm before, I don't know if I can help? Um, I think now is a great time to volunteer. It's a bit frosty this morning, but uh, the spring is really beautiful before the heat sets in, and they're um, great at the food bank with giving you guidance and um, helping you learn about uh, how food is grown and, and, and uh, giving you an opportunity to provide uh, some meaningful support for the farm. Now, you actually started volunteering before the pandemic. I did. So when you see all the lines out there at the food bank, does that give you extra motivation? Yes, it does. I mean, it's, it's a sign of how uh, disordered our food system is. So this is a way to think about how we might modify that, how we might begin to work on shifting that to a, uh, uh, a more... Uh, so word I'm looking for the a more direct model or a more uh, equitable model. All right, Suzanne. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions about the farm or how you can donate or volunteer, we have all that information. Just head to caseat.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Yeah, I hope that was good. Thank you, Max. We appreciate it. Well, trending now on KSAT.com, glamping was a great travel option in 2020 because it gave travelers the ability to social distance and most people could drive to many locations as opposed to taking public transportation. And in case you didn't know, glamping is a glamorous twist on traditional camping with more amenities that's more comfortable. The most popular glamping accommodations in Texas for 2020 were a dreamy one room tree house in Austin, a teepee rental right here in San Antonio, and a cabin with a private hot tub in Crockett. Crockett, wow, Crockett, wow, wow. okay. The website Glamping Hub had a record breaking year with a 109% increase in bookings for 2020 compared to previous years. You can read more about the Steph style camping <laughs> in this article right now at ksat.com. And I guess now, when I say now, like today and yesterday would have been the time to be Perfect glamping. camping, mm -hmm. cla slash glamping. Camping, glamping weather. Yeah. Yes, right, that's Justin? what I meant. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt. no doubt. Yeah, yeah, no, the weather's been really, really pretty nice. Uh, we've had some clouds move in this morning. I know it kind of looks and dreary outside. It's not so bad. Temperatures at 52 degrees, and I do think we'll see at least a little bit of sun today. Uh, right now, 51 Stinson, 54 Kelly and Randolph. We've got an east northeasterly wind that is generally pretty light. You see the cloud deck there that has shifted in. So all of Bear County now underneath cloudy skies, and that uh, extends out towards Hondo, trying to move up around New Braunfels, although still partly cloudy there. 
And uh, temperature-wise, 49 Seguin, 54 New Braunfels, 50 right now. Bernie stage clouds are just about to arrive to your area. And then where we have clear skies, temperatures are much cooler. 35 Junction, 43 Fredericksburg, 54 right now in Rock Springs. And cloudy down there in Catula, 55 right now. Visibility is down significantly. Places like Gonzales, Bevo, Victoria. But the fog has really stayed right there. It hasn't advanced off to the north and west. We haven't seen it here in town. The fog will stick around for another couple of hours down there to the south. Uh, dense fog advisory is still in effect for those areas. Uh, again, 54 Rock Springs, 54 Uvalde, 52 Gonzales, and two points. Well, they're up quite a bit uh, around Bevo and Victoria. One of the reasons we're seeing the fog, there's a weak boundary right about there. To the north, the air is much drier. To the south, quite a bit more humid. But the humidity will spread back in, especially as we get into tonight. And that's going to allow for some showers, some fog and drizzle here in San Antonio tomorrow morning. The dew point's going to shoot up as we get into the overnight hours into the 50s and eventually 60s. So that's pretty muggy, but then a front comes through midday tomorrow. Takes all that humidity with it. The sun's back out tomorrow afternoon. So here's what we're watching. A couple of systems here. One over the Rocky Mountains. That's our first one. That's tomorrow's system. And then there's one back out over the Pacific. That'll be Sunday's system. So this moves in tomorrow afternoon. Best chance of thunderstorms, by the way, is going to be well to our east. But we do have a, a window there for some light rain tomorrow morning. Uh, then we have a couple of nice days. Thursday, Friday looks good. Saturday, a little bit more cloud cover. And then here comes our second system. This one, I think, brings some pretty good rain chances with it. It'll be quite a bit cooler. It'll drag down some cooler air. Notice it paints some wintry weather across parts of Texas. A little too early to jump on that yet, but something to watch, especially to our north. If temperatures do get cold enough, we'll certainly keep you posted here in the forecast. Uh, for us, uh, as we get into tonight, uh, clouds will be on the increase again. And then tomorrow, 7 o'clock, tomorrow morning, showers, a little bit of drizzle and fog developing. Could be a little bit damp for the morning commute. By midday, though, a lot of those showers are starting to move east. And uh, I, I think by probably lunchtime, a lot of the rain's out of San Antonio, but still some showers across our eastern counties until we get into the evening hours and then everybody clears out. Forecast for today, 54 by 10 o'clock, 60 noontime. We're up to 66 by 2 o'clock with some sun trying to peek through. But the clouds fill back in tonight and temperatures won't be all that chilly tomorrow morning, only 56. But 68 for high on your Wednesday, 40% chance of showers mainly in the morning. Sunny skies Thursday and Friday. Although we'll get some cool mornings, clouds fill back in Saturday and a 40% chance of rain breezy and much colder on Sunday with a high of only 48 guys. Thanks, Justin. We will prepare for Sunday. Thank you. 947, 52 degrees. And we'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. You know, with my busy schedule, I really need a good night's sleep, and these bamboo sheets will definitely help with that. Take a look at how soft these are. The Comfort Luxury Sheet Set, it's 1800 thread count. Feels like 100 bucks. Breathable, no matter what the Texas season is. The microfiber and bamboo help with that. They have a deep pocket for extra thick mattresses, and it helps to reduce allergens. They come in seven great colors including white, gray, aqua, and silver. You can grab a set for every bedroom in the house. Retail price is $109, but the case at deals price is $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Now you can get this deal and many more at caseatdeals.com. Twenty twenty one is here, and there are plenty of ways to recognize our finances without cutting everything out of our lives. The Motley Fools Dana George says you should lead with your head, not emotions. It may be nice to order new subscription boxes or streaming services, but you should make sure you're getting the full value out of it first. She says twenty twenty has made many of us fear the unknown and how it could affect our bank accounts. George says that we should all focus on creating an emergency fund just in case another difficult situation arises in the future. The personal finance companies Elizabeth Aldridge says a goal in the new year is to overhaul your budget. 2020 caused many of our spending habits to change. That could include ordering more food to go or more online purchases, which may be harder to track. Aldridge says we should all start tracking what we spend, every purchase, so we can be more informed of our new habits. She says that spending should be centered on values so you can put money toward the things you truly want in life instead of things that are unnecessary. 
The Motley Fool's Marie Backman says we should all spend more mindfully. That means taking out those impulse buys throughout the year. She says that being more deliberate with your money can not only help stabilize your financial situation in a wildly unstable year, but it can also help you plan for bigger events and expenses in the future. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. We can't go on like this. Just keep telling yourself it's temporary. Sorry, guys. Claire Dunn plays a Dublin mother fleeing an abusive relationship and trying to rebuild her life in herself. I want to fix him, you know. I know, but there are some people you just can't. I was inspired by my friend ringing me while I was living in New York. She's a single mother with a few kids and she had to leave the accommodation that she was in, couldn't find a house. And I was really angry on her behalf. I suppose I was just fantasizing that and she could build a house for herself and just like bypass the system. It's land, Sandra, going to waste. Use it. Build a house for you and your girls. As Dunn developed the story, co-star Harriet Walter had an inside track. I wasn't too sure what the project was about, but I knew she was writing a screenplay because she was staying in my house. She was staying in this room. Um, <laughs> while we were doing a theatre project, we were doing an all-female Shakespeare trilogy. Their director on that trilogy, Phyllida Lloyd, signed up for Dunn's passion project. Yeah, it was like she was not acting it. It was as if she was just bearing witness for generations of women she knew in Ireland who had gone through this. She and I and Harriet used to go on a, an old bus together to get to location. And when we got home at night, we used to just have to sort of almost carry her out off the bus. She'd, she'd literally given her guts, you know, every single day. Parties work. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, the first Katie's Science Lab of 2021 is the egg in a bottle experiment. And you can watch an egg magically fit inside a bottle while learning about air pressure. What you'll need for this experiment is a peeled hard boiled egg, one quart glass bottle with a mouth smaller, excuse me, mouth smaller than the egg, paper and matches or a lighter. Oh, interesting. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Are you sure we should let David Sears near matches? <laughs> Uh, He'll 60, be fine. <laughs> 68 degrees today. We're going to see quite a bit of cloud cover. Some chances of rain, especially tomorrow morning. Some drizzle and fog to start, and then sunny skies Thursday, Friday. Well, we're so used to events being canceled. We've got one on KSAT.com that's actually a go for this month. Yeah, exciting. It's happening in Kerrville. It's the Kerrville Renaissance Festival and returns uh, by the end of the month, like Mark said, that your ticket is your mask. That's right. That'll get you in the door. Festival normally transports participants to another worldly oasis of lore. will look a little different as community groups in San Antonio continue to see a surge in COVID cases count. Uh, the three-day festival runs uh, January 29th through the 31st at the River Star Arts and Events Park. That's on the grounds of the Hill Country Youth Event Center um, out there on Highway 27 in Kerrville. And again, admission is free this year and the outdoor festival is being set up as a marketplace. And for more on this, you could go to KSAT.com. They've got updated information that can be found online uh, by clicking on a link there. We've got embedded in our article. You can also call 214-632-5766. And we've got uh, some, uh, someone from the Hill Country Festival is talking a little bit about it. Yeah, so uh, according to, let's see, the April Corey from the Hill Country Festival, she says, we're inviting our patrons and guests to visit the grounds for free, buy a craft, and enjoy a turkey leg. Sounds fun. Check it out on KSAT.com, but the Kerrville Renaissance Festival is a go. Just bring your mask. Have a great day.